Hello everyone, welcome to December's This Month in World War II Battle Report. Today's battle is focused on the latter fighting in the Hürtgen Forest before the Germans launched the Battle of the Bulge. Yes, I know that the battle report itself is using German and Soviet armies, but I want to showcase how these rules are usable with any force. My goal for this month in World War II is to give Flames of War players the option to play modified missions inspired by actual events of World War II. Not everyone has access to American and German forces, so feel free to use whatever you want. I have the link to the Google Drive folder that both this and last month's Battle of Kesmet are in. Feel free to download and try out these missions I've put together. It's fall 1944. The Allies are pushing into Germany after the massive defeats in Normandy and subsequent French campaigns. The German losses are staggering, with 25 out of the 38 divisions being utterly destroyed. It's estimated that out of roughly 290,000 casualties from the fighting in Normandy, 23,000 were killed in action, 67,000 were wounded in action, and over 200,000 were missing or captured. Out of the 2,000 some odd tanks committed to the Panzer divisions, only 70 remained. The Allies, the Americans in particular, think they're fighting a spent force, and in September, the Americans pushed into Aachen. This is one of the first times the Americans will face the Germans inside of Germany. They will soon learn that the enemy still has plenty of fight left in them. There were two overall objectives. The larger goal was to secure the southern Ruhr River dams to prevent the Germans from flooding the area, which would massively slow the American advance. The other goal was the capture of Aachen itself, allowing a stepping-off point for an American advance further into Germany. The Americans pushed into Aachen in early October, and the fighting lasted for almost the entire month, with the Americans capturing the city on the 21st of October. This fighting was grueling and attritional, with the Germans deploying tactics used against the Soviets in eastern cities. Once the city was secure, American command then decided to push south through the Hürtgen Forest to secure the dams. This wasn't the first time the Americans had dealt with the forest. The fighting began in the 19th of September, starting with Americans positioning themselves to prevent reinforcements from reaching the fighting in Aachen. Fighting itself in the forest lasted until the 16th of December, when the Battle of the Bulge was launched. Making it the longest continuous battle on German soil during World War II, and it's the single longest battle the U.S. Army has ever fought. The forest was a defender's paradise, heavily wooded and extremely hilly. The German defense was fanatical with it being on German soil, and one of the primary launching points for the start of the Battle of the Bulge. This is the table layout Paul and I used for the Battle of the Hürtgen Forest. It's meant to represent one of the many small villages located inside of the Hürtgen Forest, on the path to the Ruhr River dams. Now granted, you can set up your table however you want, but this is my recommended setup. Some hills, some roads, a bunch of forests, and ruined houses here and there, and even some sort of little village square. The mission itself is a modified killing ground mission with these deployment zones. I wrote a series of special rules to attempt to replicate the forest on the tabletop off of this description. The Hürtgen Forest was a heavily forested area, with many sudden steep hills. These are the recommended rules for the table, where it is intended for units to have extreme difficulty seeing other units, moving in any terrain other than roads, even difficulty in assaulting or defending positions from close range. As always, players are suggested to go over terrain rules with their opponent before the game begins. Whenever a team moves in the forest, there's a Hürtgen Forest check. All teams treat cross-country terrain as difficult terrain, with the following modification. Teams only have to pass one cross-check per turn when moving on cross-country terrain. They can take the check multiple times if attempting to move multiple times, but only need to pass once. Once the cross-check is passed, no more checks need to be taken for that turn. Due to the density of the forest, there's modified line of sight rules. The range is over 16 inches, 40 centimeters, 
the unit must take a skill check. On a pass, the unit can see as normal. On a fail, the unit can only see up to 16 inches or 40 centimeters. Shooting in the forest is also modified. If an infantry team has gone to ground, they are treated as being in bulletproof cover. Teams treat cross-country terrain, empty table space, as giving concealment if the distance viewed between teams is over 4 inches or 10 centimeters. Bombardments also suffer as well. Rolls to range in will suffer an additional plus one modifier on top of any modifiers already in place, but this modifier will never increase the roll past a six. This mission also uses the standard rules for ambush and deep scattered immediate reserves for the defender found in the main Flames of War rulebook. On to the army lists. We use 105 point lists for these battle reports. My roommate Paul is playing the Germans, and I'm playing the Soviets. Paul brought two formations to the table, an armored panzer grenadier company and a beach defense grenadier company out of the D-Day German book. The armored panzer grenadier company is from the 116th Greyhound Division, with the modified stats. It consists of an HQ unit with two SMG teams and a single 251 half track. First platoon was seven MG teams with Panzerfausts and four 251 half tracks. Second platoon is a dismounted Panzer Grenadier platoon, consisting of seven MG teams with Panzerfausts and two Panzer Shrek teams. They also took an eight centimeter armored mortar platoon. The beach defense formation consists of an HQ unit with two SMG teams, both first and second platoon having five MG42 and K98 teams. The formation also took an SMG-34 HMG company with four HMGs and an anti-tank gun section of three 7.5 cm Pac 40s In support, there are two Tigers of the 503rd Heavy Panzer Division. There are three SDKFZ-71 quad 2 cm anti-aircraft trucks that were upgraded with the command card to make them armored. There's a platoon of four Flak 88s with the soft skin transport card. For artillery, Paul took a single platoon of three WESPs with a Panzer III OP tank. For the recon element, he took a single unit of two SDKFZ 234s with their two centimeter guns. To round out the list, he also took the lucky command card. Today I've brought a single formation, a Hero Shock Rifle Battalion out of the Bagradian book. There are some proxies in place due to kits not having arrived yet. My Hero Shock Rifle Battalion consists of an HQ with two SMG stands, a Hero Shock Rifle Company with 13 DPMG and M1891 rifles, a Commissar, one PTRD team, and upgraded with the RPG-6 anti-tank command card. The battalion has two mirrored storm groups, both with six SMG teams, one PTRD team, one Maxim HMG team, and a single 82mm mortar team. There's a Maxim HMG company with six HMG teams and a 120mm mortar company with six 120mm in the formation. In support, there's a single regiment of four IS-2s, a minimum-sized armored reconnaissance platoon with four SMG teams and two SDKFZ-251 half-tracks. For artillery, I took four 76mm guns upgraded with the Under the Cover of Smoke command card and a single BA-64 OP Observer car. To finish them off, I took the Make Your Own Luck card as well as the Lucky card. For this battle report, all directional cues I give will be from the photo's point of view. So when I say left and right, it is the literal left and right of the photo. The deployment is as follows. Paul picked the lower table edge as his deployment area, placing me on the upper table edge. I placed both objectives at the end of the allotted area inside the long table edge of Paul's deployment. Paul placed his two ranged-in tokens, putting the mortars on the road moving up towards my table edge, and placed the WESP's ranged-in token on the shattered house located in the upper right of the town square. I placed my 76mm range-in token just below the left road, the 120mm in the forest next to the left side objective, 
Storm Group 1's mortar on the house inside of Paul's deployment, and Storm Group 2's mortar in the forest on Paul's upper left arm of his deployment zone. Now for a quick little side note, I would like to apologize for the bounciness of this video. I'm effectively making it in reverse order. We fought the battle, took the photos, and then I started editing. So where I'm at now, editing-wise, in comparison to where I was when I took the photos, is entirely different, and I already know how I'm going to do my next set of videos to make them more immersive. So, my apologies. Let's get back to it. Paul placed the 88s in ambush, then held 1st Platoon of the Armored Panzer Grenadier Platoon, the Quad Trucks, and the Tigers in reserve. Paul then deployed each beach defense platoon on one of the objectives. The wesps and the armored mortars were placed into their own forests. He placed the beach defense HMGs inside the centralized house, with the anti-tank guns flanking on either side. The beach defense formation HQ teams were placed inside the house with the HMGs. The 234 scout cars were placed on the far right of the table, located on the centralized road. Paul then placed his Panzer Grenadier platoon with the Panzer Shreks on his left arm deployment with the Panzer 30P above them, and the 116th Formation Commander with their half-track below. For the Soviets, I placed my artillery in the back line with the OP to the right of the house marked by the Wesps. I placed my HMGs inside the central house. To the left of the house, I placed the Hero Shock Rifle PTRD and Storm Group 2's PTRD and 82mm mortar teams. I then deployed the rest of Storm Group 2's teams, the Battalion HQ, Reconnaissance Company, IS-2 Regiment, Storm Group 1, and the Hero Shock Rifle in a rough L in the upper left of my deployment. Having finished deployment, under the cover of smoke goes off and my 76mm batteries lay a smoke screen. One sees a general advance for the Soviets. The BA-64 fails its cross-check will continue to do so for most of the game. The recon half-tracks move down the right side of the hill nearest to the center of the table. The infantry and IS-2s advance on the Panzer Grenadier Platoon, Panzer III OP, and the Panzer Grenadier Formation HQ teams. The 120mm mortars drop shells on the second platoon of the Beach Defense Grenadiers, killing two teams. The mortar from Storm Group 2 drop shells on the Beach Defense HMG House, killing two teams. All the HMGs and PTRD teams fired onto the pac 40s placing an absurd 15 hits, to which Paul passed with flying colors, keeping all of his pac 40s alive. The IS-2s charge into contact with the Panzer Grenadiers. After three rounds of fierce fighting, the smoke lifts, revealing a smoldering IS-2 as the three remaining tanks fall back. The lone platoon command team is holding its ground, bellowing at the retreating tanks. The pack 40s and the HMGs pass their rallies, but the 2nd Platoon of the Beach Defense Grenadiers keep their head down. The lone surviving platoon leader of the 2nd Platoon of Panzer Grenadiers passes his last stand check. The 88s remain hidden. With rumbling engines and shouted orders, the armored 1st Platoon with their half-tracks move on to the leftmost objective taking up defensive positions. Two of the tracks unfortunately get stuck in the forest, wheels spinning. First platoon of the Beach Defense Grenadiers shift left, moving towards the objective in line with the Soviet advance. The Pac-40 shuffle in place to defend the objective. The formation command of the armored Panzer Grenadiers and their surviving platoon leader mount their half-track and retreat. The 234 armored car's engines roar as they speed down the road. The formation commander of the Beach Defense Grenadiers manages to spot a Soviet unit moving up a hill and successfully ranges in the armored mortars after massed shelling. This gives the Soviets ample time to find cover and no hits are achieved. The single pack 40 that can fire puts a shell through the rear external fuel tank of an IS-2 that was cresting the hill, causing the crew to bail out. The HMGs from the Beach Defense Grenadiers shift and fire on the storm platoon that the mortars drop shells on prior and pepper them, causing a single casualty.
the IS-2 realizes that the damage is only on the exterior, and they remount their tank. The company commander of the Storm Company waves his men forward, rallying them. The IS-2s advance, but one of them throws a track, leaving it stuck behind in the forest. The Recon 251s become bogged down in between the three-story building and the hill, with the Command 251 getting stuck crossing over the wall. The Hero Shock Rifle Company advances on the Panzer III OP, and the two Storm groups advance forward, moving with the two IS-2s. Once again, the BA-64 fails its cross-check. Tracers and flashes of mortar shells light up the village square as the Soviet gun line unloads onto the German Pac-40s and HMGs in the building. No casualties are caused, but they are pinned again, and one of the 234s ends up getting bailed. The 120s drop more shells into their target, causing another set of casualties. One from the armored Panzer Grenadier platoon, and one from the 2nd platoon of the Beach Defense Grenadiers. The Hero Shock Rifle Company assaults the Panzer III OP and bails it repeatedly with their RPG-6 anti-tank grenades. The crew eventually gives up and flees, leaving the Panzer III a smoldering wreck. The Hero Shock Rifle Company then consolidate into position to support the advance. The 234 crew jumps back into their armored car, and the HMGs and Pac 40s rally with the help of the formation commander giving orders from the house. The second platoon of the Beach Defense Grenadiers fail to rally, and the armored Panzer Grenadiers' first platoon fails to rally as well. The HMGs pass their last stand, again thanks to the formation commander being close by. Whereas the second platoon of the Beach Defense Grenadiers runs from the field, and the lone survivor of Panzer Grenadier Second Platoon jumps out from that commander's half track and runs as well. The Tigers and the AA half tracks arrive from reserve, moving to protect the Wesps from the Soviet front line. The 234s position themselves to put fire onto the Recon 251s. The armored Panzer Grenadier Formation Commander disembarks and proceeds to run up the hill. The half track is sent to the rear. First platoon of the Beach Defense Grenadiers shifts further over towards the left objective, and the Pac 40s shift to put fire onto the stuck Recon 251s. The Pac 40s and the 234s pour fire into the Recon 251s, destroying both of them. The HMGs of the Beach Defense Grenadiers fire on the Soviet HMGs, pinning them and causing a single casualty. The Recon Infantry fail their rally, but the HMGs pass theirs. The Recon Infantry move back behind the three-story building, getting into cover. The BA-64 continues being stuck. The IS-2s hold their position, and all the infantry advance down the table. Storm Group 1 opens up with their flamethrower at the 116th Formation HQ, but quick thinking makes it so nobody is hurt. The subsequent machine gun fire manages to find them and a team dies. The PTRD opens fire on the 234s and destroys both of them. The HMGs unload on the Pac 40s, pinning them. The 82mm mortars continue dropping shells on the house, the beach defense, HMGs are in killing another. Gathering their courage, the Hero Shock Rifle unit leader and another team charge into contact with the Tiger. After a burst of MG fire, the unit leader is left in contact. He proceeds to attack with his RPG-6 anti-tank grenades, but it doesn't even dent the Tiger's armor. However, seeing the Soviet infantry following close behind, the Tiger decides to pull back, which causes the rest of the German line to fall with it. The other Tiger and a Wesp get stuck inside the forest and fall to the advancing Soviets. Beach Defense HMGs flee the battlefield, everyone else manages to rally, and the Flak 88s reveal themselves in the top left corner of the table. 
the Beach Defense Pack 40s and the Beach Defense HQ move back. The quads fail their cross check for the Hurtgen Forest, and the Armored Panzer Grenadiers 251 shift behind the objective. The quads and the half tracks fire onto Storm Group 1, killing two teams and pinning them down. The 88s pass their forest vision check and destroy one IS 2. The last Tiger assaults the Hero Shock Rifle Company, attempting to cause a break in the Soviet advance. It manages to kill one team. However, the Hero Shock Rifle Company pass their counterattack check and surround the Tiger. It manages to stay active but flees, causing the German line to break again, pushing them back and causing another WESP to fall into Soviet hands. The Hero Shock Rifle Company consolidates towards the leftmost objective. Unfortunately, I forgot to grab a picture of the break and had to take a photo from turn 4 to show the break off in Soviet consolidation. Both the Reconnaissance Platoon and Storm Group 1 pass their rallies. The BA-64 finally passes its cross check, making it up the road. There is a general advance across the table as the Soviets move forward. Storm Group 1's flamethrower torches the 251, causing its fuel to ignite, destroying it. The HMGs open up on the pack 40s and armored mortars to no effect. Two Hero Shock Rifle Company teams that hid in the forest successfully sneak up on the Tiger and the Quad Gun, preventing defensive fire. They manage to bail out the Quad using their RPG-6 anti-tank grenades. The Germans subsequently break off, fleeing down the hill towards the objective. Storm Group 1 charges into contact with the remaining half-track, destroying it with Molotov cocktails and grenades. Once again, the Germans fall back. Everybody manages to rally, but the Soul Pack 40 flees from the battlefield. The remaining infantry move forward into a defensive position, attempting to prevent the objective from falling into Soviet hands. The Tiger shifts to the right, wanting to fire the remaining IS-2s. Here's a close-up of the defensive ball. First platoon of the armored Panzer Grenadiers is in the front, with first platoon of the beach defense Grenadiers to the right, and vehicle-mounted MGs are in the rear. Both formation commanders are with their men in these front lines. The Tiger fires at the IS-2, scoring a direct hit but failing to penetrate its armor. The teams from 1st Platoon that are able to fire split between the Hero Shock Rifle Company and Storm Group 1, causing no casualties or pins. The 88s attempt to sight targets, but the thickness of the forest is too much for them. The HMGs move forward to threaten the armored mortars, and the BA-64 floors it, moving onto the rightmost objective to prevent a German win on turn 6. The infantry advance into firing lines, hoping to kill enough Germans with shooting that they don't have to advance into their wall of MG fire. This is a detailed photo of the layout around the leftmost objective, which will end up deciding the game. The entirety of the Hero Shock Rifle Battalion is mixed in itself between the Rifle Company and Storm Groups. The Germans have the Armored Panzer Grenadiers in the front, the Armored Panzer Grenadier Formation HQ in the center with the two remaining Beach Defense Grenadier units, the Grenadiers to the right and their Formation Commander right behind them. The quads are backed into a safe corner ready to unload on anyone assaulting them. To keep this simple, Every available Soviet team fires at any German team contesting the objective. The end result is the entirety of the 1st platoon of the armored Panzer Grenadiers and the single team of the Beach Defense Grenadiers are shot to pieces, with the armored Panzer Grenadiers half-tracks fleeing the battlefield. The remaining units on the objective are the lone armored Panzer Grenadier Formation Commander and his 251 transport. The IS-2s charge into contact with the Beach Defense Grenadiers, killing one of their teams in the Beach Defense Formation HQ. 
the beach defense grenadiers fail their counterattack and break, causing the German line to break and ending turn five with a Soviet victory. What a game. Even with Paul deploying so aggressively, it turned out to be a nail-biter at the end. The Hurtgen Forest rules made this an absolute slugfest, between the chances of a unit not being able to see at long range, and artillery only really being effective if you had some insane luck on the rolls, or kept firing at the position you dropped the range in marker on the first turn. I hope you all enjoyed this as much as we did. The rules are linked in the description below. Please like this video, be sure to comment and subscribe to the channel. I'm still tweaking with how I put together my battle reports due to the living situation I have right now, and any ideas are always welcome. More assembly and painting videos are coming up, so keep your eyes peeled and turn on those notifications for new posts. See you in January for the next iteration of This Month in World War II.